our, uh, for, for this summer. Uh, we'll take time out next week as we celebrate Father's for Father's Day. Okay, we'll, we'll have a, a Father's Day bash. And then we'll do something on July 4th weekend. We'll talk about freedom, all right, the freedom we enjoy in America and the freedom we have in Christ. But other than that, we're going to look at this. The summer of love, uh, our, our theme is love one another as I have loved you. And, and, and the springboard here is that Jesus gave this command on Monday, Thursday. That's the night before he died. Uh, He knew things were going to change, right? He knew that he would no longer be with his disciples in the same way. In in a sense, it it began, it opened up the time in which we live. We know Jesus is with us, but we can't see him, right? And we can't put our hand in his like we can feel it, right? Uh, And he's not there to to give us feedback all the time, right? When when we foul up, he's he's not there to put his arm around us. Let let me show you how this should have been done. Uh, Or or we can't watch and see what he does. It's a different time, right? And he, on that night, he, he, he established the Lord's Supper where we're to remember his presence, right? And he gives us himself, his body and blood to seal that presence to us, but we remember that he's with us. But then he he washed his disciples' feet, uh, and and he says, do like I've done to you. And and then he says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, love one another. He says it five times that night. Five times. And, and I know that we talk about up, in, and out around here, our relationship with God and, and relationship with each other and relationship with the world, so to speak, with everyone else. But the one and others are so interesting, they always talk about Christians with one another. It, it's so many, and, and other than the five in John 13, 14, 15, there's like 47 others in the Bible. There's 47 others in the New Testament, and, and the apostle is always writing to Christians. The, the, by the way, the church, the word is ecclesia, it means a gathering, right? So it's, it's always talking about this family of God in Christ. And all of the one another's are about our life together. This is how you live. You live practicing these one another's. That, that, that's what it is. And so that's our focus today. And, and for this whole summer, we're going to talk about this gift that God gives us to live as his family uh, in, in, in the one another. Today, it's about patience. Love is patient. You like that? <laughs> now, I, I love this picture, and, 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 I, and I, I, you just found a great picture, by the way. It's really cool. Um, and, and I, but I want you to remember, love, when we say it's patient, isn't just being passive. It's not just letting someone do something, but love, the patience is also active with that love. It was kind of hard to get a picture that showed both of them, right? Uh, But this one's really cool. Love is patient. Another word for patient is this. It's long-suffering. If if you get an older translation, say the King James, it won't say patience, it'll say long-suffering. Almost like that better, right? Uh, Love is is long-suffering. You you just suffer with the person. We're called patient. Uh, to be patient, long-suffering uh, with one another. Um, and when we talk about this stuff, it's easy to just to make it about words and say, oh yeah, that sounds great. But it's kind of hard to do, huh? Uh, have you ever uh, had a hard time with that patience thing? I mean, with people you love sometimes, right? Um, <laughs> sometimes with your children and, and sometimes with your parents, right? Um, sometimes in our marriages, right? That, and, and this, uh, but sometimes people go through things. There's, it's never in a vacuum, right? Uh, and long suffering means that we hang in there with them. We always hang in there with each other and we do that as Christians in this family that God has made us to be a part of. But the, the, the problem is that we always look at ourselves and something, a voice deep down on our side say, I can't do that. Wait a minute here. You're asking me to do something I can't. That's the way it always is when we start with ourselves. With this uh, love stuff, we always start here. We always start with Jesus. Love is patient, it's long suffering. That's what Jesus is for you. You know that stuff that is deep down in your heart and mind? Sometimes it's the stuff that you really regret or, or the sin you can't seem to beat and you're struggling with it all the time and, and it's like three steps forward and one step back. huh? Uh, or, or the things that you really wouldn't share because they wouldn't like it. God knows all that stuff, right? Uh, he knows all those times when, when we live as if God was not. 
Huh? And it's not okay. He knows all those things in our lives that it's not okay. The things that we feel guilt with. And, and, and the thing is, he is patient. He, he, he doesn't run away from us. He's long-suffering with us. From the very beginning, he, he, he didn't run away. See, what, what sin does is, is it, it makes us cut off this relationship for which we were created, relationship with God and relationship with one another. Adam and Eve sinned. Adam said, this woman that you gave me, well, there goes, that trashes that relationship, right? And then, and, and then he, they're running away from God. But God didn't run away from them. He's always patient towards us, long-suffering, offering his forgiveness and peace and love and grace and renewing that in us. This is really what Jesus did. It's, it's, it's all about that. Uh, maybe it's been a long time since you thought about that. Uh, maybe, as, as a, maybe like a, a glass of cool water, you can, you can rest in that for a moment. And it's grace. Grace is undeserved love today. That's what it means, undeserved love. And, and all that stuff that you have guilt with or that you're struggling with or stuff that you shouldn't have done or stuff that you should did that you didn't do, uh, all of those things that you're just not right about, just rest a minute. Know the forgiveness of Jesus and, and, and his patience for you. His long suffering with you. That's who he is and that's who you are in him. His spirit is touching your heart with this offer of, of renewed life or maybe life for the first time in him. Trust in him. Trust this patience for you, this long suffering, this forgiveness, this life that he every single day would renew in you like a, like a death and a resurrection. Every day. This is where it starts and it never leaves this place. And, and it's from this place that he talks about the one another's. Uh, and I love this quote by, by a, a famous American pastor, the primary activity of the church, and again, the church is not an institution, guys. The church is people, right? The people of Jesus, everybody believes in him. The primary activity of the New Testament church of the first Christians was one anothering one another. That's what they did. That was their activity. They had a mission on, right? They're going to declare Jesus to the whole world. They're going to love people in Jesus' name. They're going to do, absolutely going to do all those things. But the primary activity of what they did was to love one another. And, and, and in John, it, it says, love one another so that the world might know you're my disciples. It was a way, it, it is a way, the way, of everyone seeing that there's something different about you because you follow Jesus. We love one another. We are long-suffering towards one another. And it's hard sometimes, Right? But every single day we have a brand new beginning in Jesus. So as I'm talking today, if you say, man, this is hard stuff, don't, don't, don't look inside yourself. Look right back to Jesus for the power to begin anew. Whether it's with people who are close to you, whether it's with your husband or your wife or your children or your parents, or, or, or whether it's the people across the street or around the world, or, or whether it's one sitting next to you in the chair, Right? Because this is family. We're, we're supposed to live this out as family, right? The primary activity of the church was one another in one another, and the only power to do so, the, 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 the mitochondria of our life, the power source of our life is always Jesus Christ. And that he does these things first for us. We love because he first loved us. We're going to look at some texts that flesh this out for us. It, it's, you, know, you have this, this thing out here, right? But it's like, it, it was Aristotle, the chair, right? You got the chair up there, but you don't know what a chair is until you sit in it, huh? Uh, we're, we're going to look at some passages that flesh out this idea of patience with respect to love, all right? And, and in this one, Ephesians, it starts out, live a life worthy of the calling you have received. In other words, uh, uh, it's, gee, uh, God is just as banging us on the head telling us what to do. He's reminding us of who we are, the calling. How, what, what calling is it talking about? We were called by the gospel of Jesus Christ. We were called as the Spirit of God touched our hearts with the grace of God in Jesus Christ. We were called to be Jesus people. huh? So live a life worthy then of who you are. And who you are is by grace through faith. right? This is always the foundation every time in the Bible when it shows us how to live. 
This is the foundation. So it goes on. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, patient bearing with one another in love. Humble. Uh, it, it's, it's a frame of mind. It's an attitude. In Philippians 2, it says, uh, have this attitude in yourselves that was also in Christ Jesus. And it talks about how even though he was true God, he came to be a servant. And, and so this humbleness then it, it, we, is to be reflected in our lives. Even though we are children of God through faith in Jesus Christ, children of the king, we're to be humble. We come to serve, not to be served. Uh, and this attitude com- continues in this gentleness, this meekness. Uh, this is not like meek, it like, like little small boys meek and mild, go ahead and step on me. No, this is not uh, 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 so, so, somehow uh, t- taking the masculine out of the, church, out of the people of God. Meekness here is, is receiving from God our identity and who we're supposed to be. We meekly come to God and receive these things from him and we live in him. Does that kind of make sense to you? This is the foundation. So, so we, we, we're, as a servant, we receive who God has made us to be. Uh, and in that, in that foundation, then, we can be patient and long-suffering with one another. The one another's are always talking about Christians, how we treat one another, how we live together. Bearing with one another in this love, this agape love that we only know in Jesus Christ. That no matter what it takes, Jesus did it. No matter what it takes, we hang in there with each other. All right, we, we bear one another. We, we, we are long-suffering. We're patient with one another. My daughter, I remember when she was, it really sticks with me because I thought it was so amazing. She was like in 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, 11th grade, right, right in there, right? Uh, and she had two younger brothers. They're, they're, uh, they're all awesome kids, but they went through a time where the two brothers were uh, kind of jerks to her. Uh, can, I, can I say, is that bad to say? But they, 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 I, I love my kids, but they, they kind of were. And, and, and I saw my daughter... First get frustrated, right? And, and I didn't quite know how to, how to go. In. And, and then I saw the most amazing thing. She made a conscious decision to love them and be patient with them. She never uh, uh, returned evil for evil. It, it really was amazing. I, I, and, and I remember watching that and thinking how it was all going to turn out. You know, and her senior year, uh, uh, when the guy came to pick her up from the prom, um, I got this call. I was in a meeting, and, and my my boys called me. It was Jeff on the phone, but James was standing right there. And they called me, and, I, and they called me out of a meeting, which, we, you know, we, they, they knew better than that. But they, but, they, but they told the guy that has the phone, we have to talk to Dad. We have to talk. Oh, okay. So, so I get on the phone, and Jeff said, he's here. What do you want us to do to him? <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget that, you know, he, I, and I thought, I thought my brain was, who's there? You know, the guy, the guy. So do you see how this has changed now? She loved him into loving her, man, right? She was patient with them so long that they would, they said again, I mean, he, he wouldn't let me get off the phone and I told him what to do to him, you know? And I didn't want to hurt him, right? What am I supposed to do? Both well, my kids were six foot tall. And I finally said, well, just, just shake his hand really, really hard so he knows that she's got brothers. Is that all you want us to do? To, I, it was the most amazing turnaround, you know? And they have been so tight uh, for all these years. They're, they're just so tight. But I, 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 I point it back to that time when Sarah made a decision to be long-suffering and patient and just love him. Where are we called to do that? You know, the Bible talks about uh, that, that we are all weaker vessels sometimes. We all go through hard, whether, and it's every single one of us. And then in our relationships, then sometimes we, we need to receive patience and, and sometimes we have um, the joy of giving patience. Uh, and this is in our closest relationships, our, our family and home, and, and in our relationship is the family of God. This is what the text is talking about. Another one is from Galatians. It goes like this. It says, finally, all of you, uh, all of you, you see the, we live our lives out together as family. It's an American thing that says it's just Jesus and me. Uh, you don't see that. It's the ecclesia, the, the gathering of God's people. It's never just Jesus and me. So all of you, be like-minded. Uh, that is, uh, what does that mean, be like-minded? Well, you, we're, we're humble. We're meek before Jesus, right? All those things. Right? We're going to love one another. Be sympathetic. We tend to be judgmental, right? I, that sounds so nice, right? Be sympathetic. Is that, is that your knee-jerk reaction when somebody fouls up? You're sympathetic, huh? 
when, when they run the red light in front of you, sympathetic? You must not have saw it, right? Yeah, okay. Be sympathetic. Love one another. It's talking to Christians again. They're, they're, there's the one another, right? Love one another. Be compassionate. I, I love that. Uh, the Greek word spligno means to hurt for each other inside. You know, like, have you ever hurt like that for somebody? Where your stomach actually aches for them? That's what the word means. Uh, uh, be compassionate and humble. Humbly always offer your friendship. All of you, be like this. Live like this. This is, this is the gift that God would give us to practice these one another's. Goes on, do not repay evil with evil like, like my daughter was tempted to do, right? <laughs> or, um, or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. How can I do that? Come on now. How can I do that? I, I, I want to get even. You know, the Bible says that Jesus, while we were still enemies, died for us. We can do it because we're Jesus people. And we're baptized into him and his spirit lives in us. And every single day we have a brand new beginning in him. Our failures are nailed to the cross and he resurrects us to live brand new. To be kind and compassionate. Humble with one another patient and let us consider how it says in uh, Hebrews how we may spur one another on it's talking to Christians again right toward love and good deeds not giving up meeting together you know how do you do that how do you spur one another on um, how do you how do you one another each other when you're just sitting like this can you one another them Chris just the back of the head it's pretty hard to do right yeah, pretty hard to do, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's really hard to one another when we're like this. You ever notice that? Now, the first Christians in Acts, they met together like this, right? They, they worshiped like this, but then it said every single night they were together in their homes. Oh, you can face each other in your homes, right? You can share your lives in, their, in your homes, right? You can one another when you're face to face. I always tell couples that when I, uh, um, premarital counseling, I say, you gotta carve out time when you're face to face because life can get really fast. It's really easy right now, but life's gonna get fast. How often are you gonna go to Starbucks? Three times a week? It can take 20 minutes? Or are you just gonna get up early and have coffee together? If you don't like coffee, I don't care what you have. But you gotta face each other, right? You don't face each other, you can't have relationship. God's people worship like this. We face God, we say, oh, this is cool, awesome stuff but we're called to live a life and practice the one another's. How do we do that? By finding a way that we face one another, by carving out time and doing it. It's why we do the life groups around here. It's, it's why you know, I talk about the home huddles. It's, uh, you know, in, in those home huddles, uh, one of the things, the last part is blessing each other. I got a 30-year-old kid, he's a nurse. He came, I went to my brother's uh, retirement bash down in Southern California. You know, I drove like a banshee there and drove back and all that. But, but uh, I left at uh, like six o'clock in the morning on Saturday and, and we were both sleeping on my brother's floor and he gets up and says, Dad, and he's gonna go to San Diego to work and, and he puts his hand on my head and he blesses me. Whoa. And, and I got to do the same thing for him. That's one anothering and, and you grow in it. You, you learn to do it. And so we, we, we try to, to give tools to help with this. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together. Certainly large group. You know, God's, uh, the pattern of living for God's people has always been in large group worship, one out of seven, one out of seven. From the very beginning, one out of seven. But God's people have always gotten together in small groups as well to do life, to love one another uh, as we're Jesus to each other. That's what we're talking about today. You know, Jesus in this, in the gospel lesson, right? He, he models this. The, the disciples come and they've been out working, right? And they're really tired. He says, come on, sit down. Let's have a meal together. Let's one another together. That's what he's saying, right? Let's one another together. And so they go to a quiet place and they're one anothering each other, right? He's listening and he's talking and they're, and they're bearing each other's burdens. They're bearing, all those things, they're, they're doing this. But the thousands of people see where they're at and they come and they don't have enough time. 
And the disciples want to shut them out, right? They don't like them there. In fact, when it gets late in the day, but it says that Jesus has compassion on them. So now he's one another in the crowd and he's teaching his disciples, this is what you do. It's a grace thing. I want another you and we'll run another, we want another each other and, and sometimes it's hard. And that night when the people got hungry, Jesus said, hey, we, we, gotta, t- we gotta feed them. And they said, no, 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 send them away, send them away. We don't wanna do this one another, we're, stuck. we're tired. You ever like that in your marriages, by the way? Huh, it's hard sometimes. Or with your kids, you get tired ever? You don't want to sit there and listen to him anymore, right? Oh, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just a sitter. Okay, so, so, so anyway, so, so, so Jesus says, no, we're not sending him away. We're going to help him. We're going to one another him. And he uses what they have. The lunch of a child. God gives each of us gifts, and he uses us together to one another each other. And through us, the whole world. And he blesses us, and we accomplish the mission. And he set them down in groups of 50s. Why would he do that? Why didn't you just set them up like this? You can't do one another's like this. He set them up in groups of 50 so that they could see each other. And they could talk to each other. And they could bless each other so they could one another each other. Jesus models this, his whole ministry. He takes 12 and he makes them family. And they live in one another with each other. That's what he calls us to do. It's the, it's the privilege, it's the way of life that he gives us. Now why, why does he do all this? What, what's the end game? There, there's one more text and, and, we'll see, and then we'll be done. Here we go. Be com- and we started already. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Okay, that's the beginning of this. Let's go on making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace for one through the shalom of Christ. Go ahead. For each, for there is one body, one spirit, to, but to each one of us grace has been given as Christ the present. We each have a loaf of bread. All right, with the kids, we each got a loaf of bread at least. Go ahead. Here it is. Christ gave pastors and teachers. What, what, what did he give us for? To equip the people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Here we go. Read the rest with me attaining to the full measure of the fullness of Christ. You know, in, in, uh, in the West, we have this thing called self-actualization, right? It's supposed to be all about me. And, and, and it's all about myself, right? And I, I'm the best I can be and the greatest I can be if I actualize myself, right? And we miss the boat. You know, we say, it's all about, who, what's the most important? Where's my identity? Well, it's what I do for a living. Or the, or, or the great things I've accomplished, right? Or, or, my, or how I identify myself sexually. We, in so many ways, look for identity myself, me. And think we're gonna be actualized then. The end game of all this is to understand we reach our zenith as we live out our lives together as the people of Christ. Somehow in this mysterious way, as we do this, in the mission of Christ, together, as we one another each other, we will attain to the full measure of the fullness of Christ. I invite you to go on that journey with me. I invite you to do it with me. So, this week, Where have you doubted or run away from the patient and long-suffering love of Jesus in your life? Where do you personally in your life need to receive brand new this patient and long-suffering love of the Savior? Do it. This is not rocket science. Do it. Where are you especially being called to show patience and long-suffering in your life towards other Christians or a whole group of Christians? Again, do it. Where have you forgotten, denied, or lived as as if it is just Jesus and you? Where have you forgotten that God brings us to the fullness of Christ only as we live out our lives together as his family in community doing the mission of Christ? Where is God calling you not to forsake the assembling of yourself with other Christians? Do it. For Jesus said, blessed is he who hears these words and putting them into practice builds his life upon them. Putting them into practice builds his life upon them. Not the chair, but the chair. Okay, we got to, we're gonna practice this real quick. 
I, I want you to turn around. Uh, one uh, row turns around, faces the other row, okay? And if there's some folks who can't move, please some of you stand up and move and circle around them. Like, we got somebody on crutches right here. So three or four kind of circle around her for me. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go, hi, my name is. I give your name, the city you live in, how long you've worshipped with us here. Sometimes, maybe it's just today. That's cool. Okay, and then, and then do this. Describe a time when someone showed you or when you showed someone patience and long-suffering, or describe a person in your life who showed you patience and long-suffering. Uh, uh, and you know what? If this is like, oh, I can't do that, just say, it's really just say, hey, pass. Okay? And at the end of that, I'd like one person in your group to have this prayer. All right? So, so have the, have one person in your group have the prayer. So who doesn't get the instructions? All right? So you got to move. you got to turn. you got to face each other. Uh, and, and be kind to those around you. If somebody can't move, get up and, and join them. All right? Here we go, let's do it. Maybe in the next minute or so, uh, finish up and have that prayer, okay? You know, we're going to, uh, is offering next, Lisa, is that right? Okay, we're going to go ahead and receive the offering. Uh, you know, if you haven't filled out one of those connection cards yet, they're in the chair.